In an island that is surrounded by the ocean, what is the best beach in Sri Lanka? Today we are at the Hirikati beach here and five years ago it was a hidden gem with nothing on this cove but just sand and blue waves. But today it is one of the most sought after beaches on the island. So let's find out what makes Hirikati so special. What is up guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Chanel and this channel is all about exploring the lesser known gems found here in Sri Lanka. So if you are planning a trip to Sri Lanka or you just can't get enough of this paradise island, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hirikati is found on the southern coast of Sri Lanka and is a 3-4 to four hour drive from the airport or the capital of Colombo. There are a number of accommodation options on this small cove ranging from hostels to luxury villas and its close proximity to the other popular larger beach towns such as Dikwella and Tangol make it extremely easy to find a property that works best for your needs. For this vlog, we decided to stay at Dots Bay in Hiriketia, an establishment that has been pivotal in shaping the growth of this cove and is a must to check out when in Hiri for some amazing food, beverages and good vibes. The best thing about staying at Dots is that you are literally a hop, skip and a jump away from the beach with a private setting for your accommodation at whatever your budget may be. Alright guys, so now we are going to go check out a very well-known place to grab drinks here in Hirikete, which is Smoke and Bitters. This place is quite famous, I've heard about it a lot all the way up in Colombo as well. So let's go see what the vibe is about. Alright, so that was a really nice evening of food, music and drinks. Smoke and Bitters has some really interesting drinks and they all are infused with something a little special, specifically a little bit of smoke and a little bit of bitter because that's where the name comes from. I thought that was really interesting. They also have some really amazing vegetarian food and you know how it's amazing is that I forgot to film it before I started eating it. It was very tasty and quite a few selection of vegetarian dishes so I'm very happy about that. Definitely drop by to smoke and bitters when you're in Hiriketi, you won't regret it. Alright and we are back here at Dots Bay, we're checking out the nightlife on a Saturday evening. One of the interesting observations that we made about Hiriketia was that unlike most of the other coastal destinations in the south, Hiriketia had much more of a laid-back vibe to it, where one could enjoy great live music in a relaxed environment and still go to sleep by 11pm. Which is definitely not the case if you hit up one of the many parties you find in the nearby towns. Good morning guys, it is now 7am and we have driven inland about half an hour it was actually about 20 kilometers to come and visit this site which is the Mulkirigala temple and it is a rock that stands alone and rises 200 meters above sea level with a temple and a monastery at the top. Let's go check it out. We made it to the top with little effort. We were a little out of breath only because some parts of the staircase were very steep and actually very interesting to observe as well because of the way they have been carved into the side of the mountain in horizontal angles. So I'm not a morning person at all, never was and still am not. But because of our travels, I have been forcing myself for the past three years to wake up really early to come to these beautiful places. And I must tell you that there hasn't really been a time that I have regretted that. And this is just one of those moments. It is so peaceful and quiet up here. There's so much greenery. There's monkeys and birds and all sorts of animals around here. It's so peaceful and quiet. It's really one of my favorite things about coming to monasteries. We always come early in the morning 
have the place completely to ourselves and it's really when you realize how serene and tranquil these places are and that they are that way for a reason. So one of the things that are really interesting about this temple is that it is of course located on the top of a 200 meter large rock. So when you come to Sri Lanka, you're bound to hear about a number of different temples that you have to visit. And for the most part, there are a lot of them that you really should. But we recently learned that there's a difference between a normal Viharaya temple and a Raja Mahaviharaya. So the name Raja Mahaviharaya is given only to temples that kings of Sri Lanka have graced or donated to over the time of their leadership. So the story goes that this temple was built in the 3rd century by King Sadda Thissa. And the story of how he named this temple Mulkirigal is very interesting. Apparently, one of the members of the Vardha tribe or the indigenous community in Sri Lanka had found this rock and recommended it as a location for a temple. And so he named the location Mulkirigala, which translates to the rock that he mentioned. And that is how the name has eventually evolved into Mulkirigala, is what the story says. Mulkirigala is considered to be a good example of a Sinhalese Sri Lankan cave temple. And if you look around, the images on the walls of this cave are in really good condition relative to some of the other places that you will find. And this temple alone has multiple caves with a lot of cave paintings in them. And what's really unique about these cave paintings is that they are, con they are painted in a very unique style that is characteristic of the South. So this temple, it may, it's not going to be of a surprise to you guys when I say, is considered one of the most important Buddhist sites in the southern province. In fact, some people might even consider it to be just as great as one of the many temples in Dabulla. It even resembles Sigri a little bit with its cliff-like structure, but in a smaller sense. Kirikadia is most well known for this beautiful bay that has the perfect waves for the surfers. And over the years, it has really started to develop and become a very popular destination like we spoke about earlier. Now what's unique about this bay is that if you split it down the center, the left side of it is much better for intermediate to pro surfers and the right side is far better for beginners because it has gentler, more straight waves coming at you. So whether you're a beginner or a pro, there's a spot for you here on this bay, which makes it really exciting for a lot of people. However, I have to make a mention that the bay is quite small compared to some of the other places that you can surf in. So if you are joining a beginner's class and there's quite a few people, it can be a little uncomfortable to be in the water when it's so crowded. And the question remains, how fast is the development happening? And is that really a good thing for the bay? Now, if we look at the two sides, you have a beautiful bay that has developed and got popular over time and is now providing an income source for the locals. But we also have a loss of that beauty, which is because of the fact that people have started putting sunbeds onto the beach, which means there's less beach for tourists to actually come and lie down on without paying anything. So the question remains, has Hiriketia's development made it better or not? I think that is yet to be decided and it's up to us going forward as travellers and tourists to keep this in mind that as a destination gets really popular, sometimes what makes it really beautiful and what makes it really enticing is the isolatedness, the secludedness and the fact that you have found a secret place and the more and more that diminishes, does that make the place less and less attractive? Or is it more attractive to a larger group of people because of the fact that there are a lot of amenities that there weren't there before? Because when we came to Hiriketia five years ago, there was only one, maybe two places you could grab a meal and stay in. And uh, there were no beach chairs, there were no surf schools. And it was just a beautiful bay, empty, just sand and waves. Today it has way more offerings than that. It has the beach beds and it has the amazing cafes, it has the nightlife and all of that, all of what encompasses a great beach town. But I still find myself yearning 
and mourning over the fact that I will never see the Hideket here from five to six years ago again. Anyway, that's just me rambling on. Let me know what you think in the comments below. So just like the Hirikete Bay is perfect for beginner surfers or for intermediate surfers, Skillshare is also a platform that's perfect for beginners to pick up a new skill or for intermediates to fine tune and brush up a skill that they already have. With thousands of courses at your fingertips and curated learning paths to further develop your area of expertise, Skillshare's concise courses is a great way to level up and stay competitive in an ever-evolving world. We've been following up on the recent AI developments and how it could further our content creation business by following Greg Hung's course on getting started with video AI. And it's been so eye-opening. Now, if this or any of the other thousands of courses on Skillshare piques your interest, we've got a one-month free membership for the first thousand of you that use the link below. And what better place to pick up a new skill than on your computer, by the beach, while you're on holiday. And that brings us to our next point about Hiriketi, which is the growing digital nomad community. And it's been really interesting to see how this has happened over the past five years and that there's enough demand now for there to be multiple co-working spaces here in Hiriketi, which provide a nice place for you to get some work done while you're on holiday or maybe while you're just traveling. So we're here at Verse Collective and they have a really nice one with individual booths and there's also one at Dot Spay which is a nice air-conditioned cozy space for you to get some work done from. And it's been really interesting because I think what that says about the kind of tourist that likes to come to Hiriketi is that, that it is a more of a long stay tourist, someone who's spending more time in Sri Lanka, someone who's going to rent a place for a longer time and someone who's definitely going to be working from here and maybe even families maybe. So that I think is what really is starting to differentiate Hiriketia from the rest of the beach towns and I'm, I'm here for it. Trying out the local cuisine is something that we always recommend and I know that you're thinking, of course we know that Chanel, but what I really mean is that it's going to be completely different on the north and on the east and on the south and everywhere in between. Everybody makes your favorite curry in a different way and that's why I love eating rice and curry specifically when I'm out of Colombo because it's never the same and it's so interesting to see what kind of spices and what ways of cooking is favored by people in these regions. And while there are quite a few spots in Hiriketia itself, we are here in a spot that is a little bit away. We drove here, it was about 10 to 15 minutes to get here. It's called Tangol Rice and Curry and this is a fantastic place because of the fact that it's like a rice and curry buffet where you will have up to 20, sometimes even more curries to choose from and you can get a wide variety of curries. So I'm excited to dig in and let's go in and see what they have for us. All right, well, here we are with our delicious rice and curry and it has been such a treat to see them whipping this up. And for me, the most exciting thing is that they had one of my favorite curries, which is so uncommon that I've only had it maybe like twice or three times in my entire life. And I live here, guys. That's the uh, garlic curry and it is so good. And also just the variety of dishes and the different flavors that each one has. It's a completely different experience every single time and I am loving it. Which by the way, if you are loving this video, feel free to give us a thumbs up. It really goes a long way in showing our videos to more people who will also enjoy it. So thank you in advance for that. And I am going to enjoy my delicious rice and curry. Walking around Hiri, we've noticed that there are quite a lot of spas and Ayurvedic centers and we really thought we must try it out if it is so popular. So we're here at Tonic Spa and I'm very excited to try it out. Also, if you are interested in getting to know a bit more about the wellness industry of Sri Lanka, make sure you subscribe to our channel because we will be doing a deep dive into the topic very soon.
So is Hirikiti Beach still the best beach in Sri Lanka? Here's the thing, while there are more chairs on the beach, while there are more businesses on the beach, and while it can be a relatively more pricey than some of the other beach towns, there is something here that you're paying for. Hirikitia Beach has been one of the cleanest beaches I've seen in Sri Lanka so far. And I think the reason for that is that the community of businesses here have a very conscious and sustainable mindset and that's contributing to this clean beach. We have this trainer here from the swamp that makes sure none of the plastic from this area goes back into the ocean. We have dots growing their own food which started during the lockdown times and having to supply your own vegetables. We have smoking bitters who make their own bitters locally and that started because of an import restriction. So it's really interesting to see how these businesses have adapted and are continuing to grow with this mindset of sustainability. So at the end of the day, when you come to Hirikiri, that is the real price that you're paying for. That's why you pay a little extra here than other places. And I'm really happy about that because for me, what that tells me is that it's gonna extend the longevity of this place being a really beautiful place before it gets too overcrowded or before there's too much development. And with that, we have come to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching until the end. And if you want to see more of our videos exploring in Sri Lanka, make sure you check out the rest of our channel. There's plenty of it there. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.